guys, friends. Okay, we're gonna start this me video off with measurements. I'm going to show you guys how I measure my heads and my clients' heads for wigs, especially if they're getting a handmade one. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I do. So the first thing, the first thing is you need measuring tape. All right. If you do not already have this in your household, you can find this at your local grocery stores. It should be in a houseware department, anywhere that any place that sells a sewing kit, you can find this because this is typically in a sewing kit. Or I'll leave an Amazon link to where you can purchase this as well. Or you go to your local 99 cent store and buy this as well. All right. First measurement that you are going to want is your circumference and we're going to measure in inches so i am going to take my tape and i am going to put it behind the nape of my head the nape of my head and i am going to center the the metal thing or the beginning of the tape right in the center of my head and i am going to connect it and then wherever it meets i'm gonna pull it out and that's going to be my number. So I stopped right between 22 and 23. So I am a 22 and a half head size. I upgraded to a 23 because I do have hair. Just to give my room, my wigs a little bit more room and for it to be comfortable, I went up in size to a 23. So it won't be super, super tight on me and it'll fit comfortable, okay? And the reason why a circumference measurement is super important important is because if you buy one of these which you're going to need if you want to make a well-made wig and a wig that actually super fits you you're going to need a blackhead and when you order blackheads you order it by the circumference all right so that's why your circumference measurement is important so the second measurement that you want to take is from the front of your head to the back of your head so I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to put it all the way to the back of my nape right here and that's going to tell me what size I am. So I am a 13 inch going from the front to the back. This third measurement you're going to take, so you're going to do from the side of your face where your sideburn is all the way to the other side of your face where your sideburn is. Not all the way down, but like at the tip of your ear, okay? And you want to get that measurement. And I am also a 13. So we have established that my circumference it's a 23 from front to back is a 13 from uh, left to right is a 13 all right you guys so this is my black head with my wig caps that I use okay so this is already the circumference so we can disregard that measurement all right and so now you want to measure the rest of it what I like to do is I'll take my measuring tape and I'll measure front to back till I get to 13 inches so I start in the front right start in the front and then I measure to back till I get to, to to 13. So that's about right here, right? But I added all the way to 14 just to give me some seam allowance, just in case anything happened with this wig. So I pull it, I'll pull it down to 14 and pin it. Put my T-pins on both sides of the seam so it'll stay there. And then for your frontal, it's super easy. You know frontals are 13 by 4, so you know it's 4 inches in the front, right? So your frontal typically will sit from the beginning to right here but you want to move it down an inch so right here so I will mark right here where it says four inches and I will mark it down and then I will apply my frontal down neatly flat flat and flush like this and then I'll sew her down. So you guys are gonna see me do this in the video, but I just want to show you guys how you do it, so. All right, best friends, let's get into it. This right here is nylon thread. This is my preferred thread because it's definitely stronger. It doesn't fray. Cotton th thread tends to fray um, and it's just real neat and sturdy so and it'll make your wig last longer. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, a metallic marker. I am using a Sharpie and I'm gonna show you why in a second. And this is a canvas blockhead and the inside is made out of cork. You're gonna need some T-pins and this is my wig stand where I make my wigs. A lot of people ask what's that cheetah print or uh, material on there for? It's because the canvas head circle is kind of big so I put that towel or whatever in the middle to just make it sturdy. And you're going to use your wig cap of choice. Mine is a mesh dome cap and I love it because it's breathable. And your bundles of course. This is from West Kiss. They did 
sent me this hair so this video is sponsored by them this is their deep wave and i have it in four bundles i think two 24s or 22 20 and an 18 inch closure i'm sorry a frontal um i did go ahead and bleach the frontal because i i just wanted my not to bleach and it did come pre-plugged but i did go in and pluck it a little bit more the, bl the blockhead does have a metal seam and that's just showing you the center of the face. So it'll go directly between your eyes and down your nose, all right? And so when you put your mesh cap or your wig cap on that, you wanna, you know, align it correctly, all right? I, I think in the beginning of this, I'm gonna end up adding a bit, uh, like a clip of showing you how to measure your head so you guys can actually know how I get my measurements to make my wigs fit, fit perfectly, okay? Um, so therefore, when you add your wig cap or your mesh cap down, you want to pull the back down a little bit um, to stretch it a, a tad bit because I find when you start to sew and stuff, your your wig might little, shrink up a little bit, not too much. It usually stays the same, you know, structure that you are sewing in, but you I just like a little bit extra security that is going to cuff the back of my uh, back the back of my neck. All right, so you want to pull the frontal a half a half inch or a full inch in front of the wig cap, and then you want to make sure that there's enough lace on both sides because you want to make sure that it's evenly placed in the middle. So you want to pin it down. After you pin it down, it should fit flush on your mannequin head and your mesh cap. You want to get your nylon thread and your curved needle, and you want to make a knot in your needle with your thread and you want to begin to sew all right curved needles are way easier to use than straight needles especially when you're uh, when you're sewing um wigs so you want to go underneath and you want to pull it out yes go through this the mesh cap in the elastic band okay you want to find the opening in the thread and you want to grab the needle and you want to pull it through this is the lock method okay we're going to lock it lock it in again go through the mesh cap go through the frontal find the opening pull it through all right locking it in we want this wig to last i don't you i don't typically do the hand method no more but i like my sewing machine but i'm gonna show you how to make your wigs last go through the mesh cap through the frontal lock it in okay and you want to do this for the entire portion of the frontal until you get to the other side. Okay, so now that my string is shorter, you can see how I'm pulling it through. Okay, I'm going in. I'm putting it through the thread. And I am pulling it through. All right, and that's the entire motion of how you make a wig. And it's super, super easy. So I'm going to pull it through. Make sure you get all the way to the end of it. Pull it through and basically that is it so now I'm gonna do it again make sure it's locked and now I'm gonna wrap the string around the needle three times to make a secured knot so the string will not unravel so I like to do that like three times two or three times so my string will not come unraveled okay pull it through don't pull it out all the way. Grab the end of your string, wrap it around or their needle three times, pull it through. And after you do that, take your scissors, cut the string off, the remainder of the string, tie it, hand tie it in a knot. All right? Boom, boom, cut the rest off. And now your frontal is secure on your mannequin head. So it should look like this, very flush and flat against your canvas head, against your mesh cap, okay? So now I'm going to show you how I do my guidelines. Um, I started doing guidelines because when I was doing the sewing machine method, 
it kind of get convoluted when you're trying to do straight lines so this was a very easy way for me to keep my wigs neat when i was doing the sewing machine method so i just kept this um you know this this little system going even for handmade wigs and this is great for beginners as well so Basically what I do is I'll take my metallic marker. It does not have to be a Sharpie. It could be any metallic marker and you do a, a thumb space between each track. Okay. Now I have four bundles that I am trying to fit onto this wig. So I am going to do a, a, a thumb space between each wefts because I am doubling my tracks. Okay. I think I have about 14 lines in this wig altogether, maybe 15 give or take. Um, so it just depends on your head size and everything like that. So if you single track your, your wefts, you want to use your pointer finger and do a half inch space between each track so you can fit your bundles in there. Okay. So it's just up to you. You could double your first bundle and then you can single track your rest of them, depending on how many bundles you have. If you have three bundles, you could do that. If you are doing something thinner, like a bob, you could do this method when you double sp when you're spacing your tr your webs as far as I am, which is only a, like an inch. And when you put it on, it's not gonna look that big of a uh, you know spacing. But this this is what I do, and this is a very easy way for you guys to figure out how to lay your tracks and to make your wigs super neat when you're trying to make them. So when you get closer to the top, you want to use your pointer finger instead of your thumb because your pointer finger is like a half inch space between each track. And that's when you want your tracks to be closer together because you want to close it in and you don't want to see any gaps. And you want it to make it look flawless and perfect. Okay, so just watch how I'm doing this. It's super easy and it's not complicated at all. So after you do the, the guidelines, this is what your wig cap should looks like, okay? And it's super easy. I think I have about 14 lines in there. I did sew like two extra um, tracks in just to make it full at the top so you wouldn't have it being gappy. So yeah, so this is what it's look like and now you're ready to sew. So I took my longest bundle, which is a 24 inch and I unraveled it and I doubled it, okay? So I am going to take a T-pin and I am going to stick it through both of the wefts, okay? So it can stay on my blockhead. And I am going to pin it on the first line. So it, it'll be easier for me to sew it down and I won't have to hold tracks while I'm sewing. And so I'm gonna do that in front and I'm gonna pin it on the other side so it can stay in place while I'm sewing. And just like the frontal, you want to take your threaded needle. You want to put it through the weft, through the, the band, okay? Because you want to make it secure. And you want to take it through the strings, through the, through the thread, all right? Put it through it, and you want to knot it off. And you just do that all the way through. And I promise you, your wigs will come out bomb. So I'm going to show you guys again. You want to go through the tracks, through the through the cap, go through the strings, okay, and knot it off. And you want to do it again. Do it a couple of times just to make sure your tracks will not slip. Put it through the weft, wrap the string around the needle to make a different type of knot. The more knots, the better. I'm just letting you know so she won't slip and you won't have any issues. And you want to knot it off. 
like that like wrapping it around a string on both ends of the track because of the fact that it'll just help it be more secure so, so knot it off pull it through and then now you can go through and sew from one end to the other So when you get to the following end, you want to put it through the weft, wrap it around the string three times, uh, around the needle three times, pull it through, and you want to do that all the way to the end of the track just to secure it. When you're in the middle of the track, you could just go underneath. You don't necessarily have to go through the weft, okay, because it'll take you forever doing through the weft, all right? So just go underneath while you're in the middle of the track, but when you get to the ending of the tracks where you're going to cut the weft off, you want to go through and you want to lock it in. And then boom, girl, your first track is done, okay? And you want to do this all the way until you get to the section where your tracks go a different direction. I just want to say what kids came through with these thick bundles like these are super full and I appreciate these kind of bundles like they just go a long way when you're doing a sew-in or making a wig. So I just feel like it's like unnecessary to show you how I sew each and every track on to this wig. If you just get the gist of how to do one track you know how to do all of them. So I'm locking the you know, doing my, doing my lock motion and then going under the track into the, the cap to make sure that it won't budge. And I just do that for the entire wig. Now I'm going to show you what I do to connect the last track to the frontal. And, and after that, your wig is ready to go. All I do is pin the last track down and I just do the locking mo motion for the entire last track. So... You go through the weft, you go through the mesh cap, you go through the frontal seam, okay? And you just do that all the way through until you finish. Make sure you tie a knot and your wig is basically complete, okay? And you did that. We, 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 made, a, we made a wig together, an easy wig, a wig that fits. Best friends, we did that. <laughs> um, I can honestly say I do not miss hand making wigs. This did take me like... To film and record this, I mean, if I wasn't filming, this probably would have took me an hour and a half, but because I was filming and all this kind of stuff, it took me a good three hours to make this wig. And I do not miss that because my sewing machine, I'll be done in like 30 minutes and I'll be happy. But yeah, like I had to get this video out. I kept promising you guys how I do this. A lot of people aren't into the sewing machine wigs. Like they don't know how to do the sewing machine. So, you know, learn how I learned hand making it um and after you finish sewing all the tracks on you definitely want to turn the wig inside out and cut off the excessive um material that's underneath which is the cap all right you can sew an elastic band on if you want to i do not have a video on that i will link i'll try to link one in the description bar for you that's very uh knowledgeable for you guys and um i did wash this hair because like i said i just don't wear hair that's not washed <laughs> and especially if it's coming from a vendor like it must get washed so this is the how the wig looks if you follow my instructions to the t she's very neat and she's constructed very well she's not bulky whatsoever okay like she's just hitting right now and um she just she's just laid to perfection and I that's what I wanted to show you guys because I was lacking and I did not show you guys what or how to make a handmade wig so this is what it is and y'all at the end of the day I um like I said I washed the wig and I just laid her and let her dry and that is it so I tried to make this as easy and simple for you guys with as few as steps as possible just clear like you know 
But, you know, if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, you guys. Definitely like and share this so we can get more views and more sponsorships so we can get some more content out of, out of here. But, you know, I'll be back with some more videos, best friends, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.